Hello and welcome to vlog number 9. In this episode I review my new 3D printer, the Photocentric Liquid Crystal Precision 1.5. This video is completely unsponsored and the views and opinions are entirely my own, based on my own experiences. You will have seen in the previous episode my reasons for going down this route of getting a resin 3D printer. And in this video I'll explain in more depth why I purchased the Precision 1.5. First of all, let's deal with resolution. Typically, the highest resolution an FDM printer can achieve is based on its nozzle size, which is normally 0.25mm. Finer nozzles are available, but hard to work with. FDM printers can have a layer height as low as 0.06mm. The print resolution of the Precision 1.5 is based on pixel size, as each layer is projected from a screen in the base of the printer. The Precision 1.5 has a layer height as low as 0.025mm and a pixel size of 0.047mm. This is finer than the thickness of a typical human hair. Photocentric produce a wide range of resins for the Precision 1.5 for a variety of applications. I was after a resin capable of surviving the vulcanization process, which would be subject to high temperatures and pressures. The Precision Mold resin is ideal and specifically engineered for this task. Other resins would be perfect for regular model making, but the blue precision mold resin was exactly what I was after. So I ordered a precision 1.5 from the UK distributor and the next day my new printer arrived. It was very well packed and a lot bigger and heavier than I expected. You certainly get a lot for your money. It's always a bit of a puzzle unboxing something like this as you don't want to damage anything. The corner packing came out easily, then the printer is simply lifted out as a whole. Once the strapping is released, the cardboard can be unfolded and the shroud lifted clear. A composite tray secures the base unit, which can then be taken out. This has to be carefully lifted out by the base and not the z-axis. With the shroud back on, you can see just how big this printer actually is. It is a very smart, substantial piece of technology and very well built. Now, let's see what else is in the box. All the ancillaries are in a separate box under the printer. It comes with a spray bottle for the cleaning fluid, usually isopropyl alcohol, a bottle of the grey model resin to get started, a UK power lead, funnel and filters for reusing the resin, gloves, tools and a USB stick with the software license. This is a sample printed on this printer in the grey model resin and looks very good. You get two vats for the resin. These are a consumable and can either be replaced or reskinned as necessary. The build plate is also separate. The last item is the power brick. The first thing to do is go online and download and install the slicer software, Photocentric Studio. This is activated with the license key on the USB stick and can be used on two computers. You can always run a free trial or purchase a license. Links to Photocentric and suppliers are in the description below. Now let's prep something for printing. This was one of the wheel and track units from my next project the Sherman Cobra King from the Siege of Bastogne. It's modelled in Cinema 4D and exported as an STL file. In the slicer software you can see I've had to rotate the part to fit it on the build plate. I've chosen to let the software automatically add the support material. 
I'll start playing with the settings when I'm a bit more familiar with the printer. The slicer software works very well and allows me to see exactly where issues with the model need to be addressed. The files are now transferred onto the printer via the USB stick. The stick can then be removed and the first print run off. With the build plate attached, a fresh vat is placed over the screen on the base plate. The chosen resin is then poured into the vat, in this case the blue precision mould resin. The shroud over the printer is then replaced straight away, preventing any early curing taking place. The touchscreen interface on the front of the printer is really easy to use. Just select the file and hit print. It then displays the print layer by layer as it prints, together with an estimate of the printing time. For this part, the slicer software estimated 10 hours, but the print took 22. I wasn't too concerned, I just have to reassess the slicer estimates. So, 22 hours later, the print is finished and ready for processing. The build plate and the print are removed from the printer and sprayed with a cleaner to remove any uncured resin. You can use isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits as I'm using. Photocentric also have their own cleaner. This has to be sprayed on liberally, especially in the detailed areas. Gloves are recommended, but I managed to stay pretty clean for this stage. The build plate also needs cleaning and has a lot of nooks and crannies to flush the resin out of. The print and build plate can now be rinsed off in hot soapy water. Now the print can be removed from the build plate with the spatula provided. At this stage the resin is still slightly flexible and yet to fully cure. It's worth giving the part a clean with an airline at this stage to remove any lingering resin. I found my airbrush particularly useful for this. Finally, the print is placed in water in a clear container to cure for a couple of hours in daylight. I then dried the print and let it further cure on a windowsill. Now, let's have a look at the fully cured printed parts of the Sherman. My first print was the upper hull and it is incredible. The detail is amazing and the layer lines minimal. I then printed the lower hull, but on one side the bottom edge didn't come out as well as the other. The track units were a major triumph, with pin sharp edges and perfectly rendered detail. The turret and suspension details were a similar story, again with super sharp detail. The remaining parts have also come out well, although I think I packed them in a little too tight for the auto support feature. Running a resin printer is not quite as simple as it seems. There are issues with all resin printers, and the Precision 1.5 is no exception. Generally, build volumes are smaller than for FDM printers. In its class, the Precision 1.5 has one of the largest build volumes available at 68 by 121 by 160 millimeters. Earlier, I mentioned consumables. In addition to the cost of the resin, 
When the resin vat is emptied back into the bottle, it must be filtered. The resin vat will need to be periodically replaced or re-skinned as the film deteriorates. Cleaning fluid, paper towels, filters, vats and vat film all have to be considered. Photocentric have taken this into account and designed a relatively inexpensive vat system that can be easily replaced or reskinned. It's a good idea to carry a stock of all these items, keeping the vat film as clean as possible and filtering the resin after every print will help you get consistently good prints from your printer. So would I recommend the Precision 1.5? Absolutely, without question. The build quality is excellent, the software is very easy to use, the print quality is exceptional and it can print in a wide range of resins. Consumable costs are kept as low as possible and product support is very good. Would I change anything? A bigger build volume of course and an easier to clean build plate, but that's just trying to find fault. The Precision 1.5 is truly a great 3D printer and will help me achieve the levels of detail I've always strived for. I hope you enjoyed my vlog and subscribe to my channel so you can catch up on the next episode and see me start cleaning up the Sherman prints and getting them ready for mold making. Thanks for watching.